So one of the things I track on this channel is about AI startups, who's doing training, who's doing inference, and what's happening in the silicon world. And every so often you'll see me post a picture on a video, something like this, or I'll post it on my blog. It's about how much funding each of the AI hardware startups in the market has got, and we've gone through a period of activity recently. Now, one question I always get asked about this graph is, when's the consolidation gonna happen? Now we've seen some companies exit, Intel bought Habana, um, Mythic AI kind of uh, went bankrupt, then got some more money from an investor. Um, we've seen other companies be acquired. That's the news today, because one of the darlings on this list, Graphcore, who have raised about $730 million, have now been acquired. And uh, it's, it's not the fairy tale ending that you might expect. What's your minimum specification? So Graphcore as a company was actually a spin out from another AI company. This company was called Exmos. Uh, Exmos, Graphcore, both based in Bristol in the UK. And Exmos is an AI company that deals with uh, low power silicon for like detection devices. And they've been relatively successful. They've been actually around for over a decade, maybe even two. We've got an episode featuring Exmos AI on the AI hardware show, and you can find the link here or in the description. And Graphcore was a spin out basically done with uh, two academics from Bristol University, uh, Nigel Toon and Simon Knowles. And they were one of the first companies, AI hardware startups, to reach unicorn status, basically uh, worth a billion dollars. And they went through several rounds of funding over the years, developing what they called the IPU. Now, this is their you know, inference processing unit. Uh, and in the early days, it was seen as this, were the, this was the company that was going to lead the AI revolution. They saw what happened with the image recognition on AlexNet uh, and said, you know, that sort of uh, convolutional neural network is what we're going to optimize for. So they built several versions of their silicon uh, with of their IPU, reaching you know what is the latest generation now is called Bow, and there, that silicon uh, right now is being sold at or was being sold in a one U server of four chips with a control chip, and the idea is that you put these in a rack, and if you have so many racks, then you create what's called a good computer. I actually wanted to do a video when they announced it saying, uh, who wants a good computer? Well, there's no point in doing that video now. And part of that software was the j just the focus on anything convolutional neural network. So this is pre-transformers. This is all about um, processing uh, images and video for recognition or identification or labeling. And that's what they were really good at. Over the time, at least in the early, t uh, uh, early stages, they had deals with Dell and Microsoft to you know, essentially sell systems to those customers. And both those deals fell through. At one point, I believe even Graphcore was expected to be the AO hardware provider for, um, for Facebook at some point. Maybe I get that right. Maybe it was one of the other Super 7. But uh, the point is they, ha they had a potential of having a very large customer. And that all fell through. At one point, even the, the hardware that they offered was in a PCI card. And because each PCI card was differently colored, people who wanted them replaced uh, wanted one with the exact same color. And if they had a different color, they would complain that they weren't getting a like-for-like -like replacement. So that was an issue as well, it seems. And over time, the company you know started talking about roadmaps. They had a 7 nanometer chip, and their goal was to produce a 3 nanometer chip that was going to be you know the intro into uh, Transformers. Instead of going, say, 7, 5, 3 nanometer on TSMC, which is what most companies do, they were going to go 7, 5, and in the middle they did this um, chip-on-wafer bonding strategy, and that's what became the Bow IPU. That was essentially a, yeah, a chip-on-wafer technology where you put the uh, capacitors in that second uh, layer wafer, and as a result they got a 30% frequency increase, um, which they then sold at the same price. Uh, it's an interesting technology, but they did that instead of doing a five nanometer chip that did transformers. And ultimately, I think that's kind of what killed the, uh, the company to where we are today. Um, 
one of the things that we've heard over time is that their revenues has been super low. So with a startup, you typically have what's called a burn rate. This is how much money they spend in a given time. And the reports last year or uh, in, in 22 uh, was a $200 million burn rate for only $3.75 million of revenue, which is the wrong way round. Um, Graphcore consistently uh, claimed you know, they were one of the most active uh, AI chip vendors in the market, and they would point to all the research papers being done on their chips. The only problem is uh, most of those research papers came out of Bristol, so uh, the founders of the company and their research groups, but also to universities that were given the hardware for development purposes, not for uh, not B2B, com you know, corporate sales that would actually drive their revenue to build the company into something more than just a startup. And so over time, people were looking at Graphcore and saying, why is this company, you know, that's raised 700 million, um, not actually selling anything worth a damn? And to that point, many investors wrote down their investments. Um, Sequoia, for example, cut at least half. Others reduced their uh, investments either completely or significantly, uh, down rounds to the point where for the past six, eight months, it's been rumored that Graphcore just doesn't have enough money to survive and they needed to be sold. And the question was always gonna be who? And um, I've been speaking with people like Sally and Nitin over at E-Times, we've been postulating, there were rumors that uh, a Saudi uh, firm, something like a G42 would come out and buy, and buy them, or essentially what we call an aqua hire. So acquire the company just for the talent and not actually for the products. And then in the last couple of months, the rumors start building up that SoftBank, the company that owns most of ARM, and they did the IPO uh, for ARM, they're the ones that tried to sell, sell ARM to NVIDIA. Basically said, we need an AI hardware team. So they went ahead and acquired Graphcore as of when I'm filming this, like a day and a half ago. It, the, uh, the news uh, was uh, went live like really late in the UK. So, um, I've been in touch with the company um, or with the PR team, and th th there's a backstory there. I'll get to it, but uh, the, the PR team basically said um, that the uh, they're going to continue supporting current customers with their products. Um, they're really happy to be acquired by SoftBank, and that SoftBank wants to build an AI hardware team. Uh, whether that's an AI hardware team that they're going to integrate into ARM, because ARM's AI exploits are a bit different to everybody else's, as in they want to provide the vehicle for enabling AI, not necessarily the AI itself. And and so it's going to be interesting on that front to see what happens, whether SoftBank wants to roll it into ARM and increase the value of ARM, um, or whether they're just going to just keep it being their own thing and try and build AI chips specifically for SoftBank to do their thing. Because uh, SoftBank, you know, SoftBank Investment Fund is all about investing and then using tools to help their investment companies grow. So th th there have been no official numbers as to what, uh, how much this acquisition was for. There was a report saying it was about 500 million. So that means that it's been acquired. If that number is true, and we have nothing to say that it is, but if that number is true, then it would mean that um, Graphcore was acquired for. Uh, less than the investment funding came in. There's also been reports, and uh, I asked Graphcore about this, and they refused to comment about all the employees that had, you know, the restricted stock units, the sort of things that you do when you go join a startup. Um, all that sort of equity buildup, that's all been gone. Any uh, stock options that employees bought during the lifetime um, of the startup, they're all they're all being zeroed out essentially. So some employees have lost money on that. Um, there were reports about the founders uh, selling personal equity a couple of years ago um, that I wasn't able to find any conclusions on that. But if that was the case, that, that would have been pretty uh, not good uh, for anybody involved in the company. I actually spoke to uh, an engineer at Graphcore, I think at the beginning of this year, basically saying, where's your three nanometer chip? We've been waiting for it for two years. Um, though in retrospect, if you look at what TSMC has been doing on three nanometer, the only big chip we've seen out of three nanometer right now is uh, Nvidia's Blackwell, and that's not coming out, you know, not being put into the mass market for at least another couple of quarters. Um, and Graphcore being a startup wouldn't ever be the lead partner for a technology like that. Uh, so if that's still in the works, we'll wait and see. Uh, the PR refused to comment on, you know, what the pipeline of products is going to be from Graphcore. Um, general uh, perception from people in the industry I've spoken to is that it's now, you know, uh, the product line is nothing. It's just simply an aqua hire. They're just hiring it for the talent. 
uh, with the PR with GraphQuery, it was always a bit weird. Uh, I think I first met them in supercomputing 2016, 2017, um, and they had a booth on the show floor. Uh, I remember going around with David Shaw from Wikichip, and uh, that was when they were showing off their big uh, Poplar software package. Because you know all about AI, not only is it the hardware, you've got to have the full software stack to be able to support it. And uh, they were showing, they were going around as if Poplar was you know the next big thing in software, and it was practically ready. It wasn't actually given version 1.0 status until last year. Um, which really hit me by surprise because I already thought it'd been in at least V1, if not V2, by that point. And since since then, um, PR with GraphCore has been really weird. Uh, I've tried reaching out several times and not gotten anything. I keep being asked to be added to PR lists. At one point, the CMO even reached out to me on LinkedIn because um, I think I'd said something, and she's like, "Hey, we should have a chat." And I said, "Well, I'm on the road for another couple of weeks. Let's sync up when I get back." And then nothing. Um, so I don't know whether it was a case of them just doing the bare minimum or there was just nothing to say. You know, some companies are like this. And it's why I always recommend to my clients who are startups that if you want to you know, get mind share and control the narrative, you need to employ somebody who knows how to deal, talk to the press, talk to analysts, um, and be able to you know, help them understand the message, even if they disagree with it, uh, rather than having to teach people every time. Or if there's just nothing to say, uh, you don't need to teach them every six months when you have a press release. You've got to keep you know, those uh, conversations going regardless of what's happening on the front or the back end of the company. Uh, but that is essentially the news as we see it. Uh, I can put a link to the official press release uh, down below. I also posted it on my Twitter, basically saying, you know, we've been acquired, we're keeping our offices, um, more information to come. I have asked PR if um, either Nigel or Simon are willing to do an on-camera interview with me. Uh, they're based in Bristol, I'm based in London, so next week as I'm filming this, if uh, if they happen to say yes, I'll go down there and, and, and film an interview. So if you do have questions for a company like GraphCore, um, or if you want to hear about Nigel's new book that he's been doing a book tour on while the company's been going through this, then again, put comments down, uh, down below. But is this the start of the AI hardware companies going into consolidation? I mean, I track a good you know hundred or so, and I know Sally does another fifty more at least. It depends how many of the like the super small tiny startups you want to follow, really. And you know there are billions of dollars put into this industry. It's still into the hardware industry. Software is a little bit different. But you know, Nvidia spends more than that developing Blackwell. So the question is, will some of these smaller companies find their niche? Or will we see consolidation? Out of all the companies that I follow, only one has really generated more revenue um, than funding so far, and that's Cerebrus. Or at least with the d deals that Cerebrus have uh, started to execute on, they will have generated more revenue than they have in VC funding. Uh, others are getting there. Uh, so some of them are starting to be successful. Uh, others you don't hear about for two years, and you're wondering what's going on. So. We will see consolidation in this industry. This is a big one. This is a big one. This is one of the first unicorns. And really, from my perspective, it's just an indication of their silicon strategy just wasn't focused towards transformers because they just stepped into the market too early. They saw an opportunity with AlexNet, with CNNs, came to the market with a product. The market didn't do well with transformers when transformers first came out for large language models, for the, the GPTs, for the Llama 2s. And rather than pivot to new silicon to deal with that, especially ones you know with high memory capacity, instead they stayed. You know, it's basically stay the course, stay the course, keep going, keep going straight. Not you know, don't pivot. It's it's um, sunk cost fallacy almost. Or you have to. They want to say to investors, oh, um, we didn't predict this. We need to go pivot hard. Um, they just decide to stay the course. So we don't know what was in the three nanometer chip. What would make it really good? Um, for transformers, maybe I can get that when I go vi if I go visit them uh, next week. That's one thing I probably should ask about that they probably won't say anything about. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. Um, and yeah, my minimum specification here is there is going to be some consolidation. It's going to there's some big companies will fall, uh, some will succeed, and uh, the, for investors it's going to be a hard time deciding which is which. Uh, there's going to be a lot of announcements uh, at uh, hot chips. 
at the end of August. I'll be there. Um, lots of uh, disclosures there from the big companies and some of the small companies. I've also got you know plans to go around and interview people like John Ross at Grok. Um, maybe another interview with Jim Keller if he's around uh, and ask him what's going on there and uh, yeah, see what's happening. Uh, so if you're interested in AI hardware, then this is a channel you should be watching and we'll see you in the next one.